Hello everyone! So in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing some of the purchases I made in 2021. This is only half of them, otherwise it'd be way too long, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb, and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reviews, reveals, quite a few unboxings as you'll find out here in a moment, luxury travel, daily vlogs, pretty much anything that has to do with anything in the realm of life and style, you're gonna find right here on this channel. So before we go any further, you know what to do. Pause this button, hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and say hi to me down in the comments. I love talking to you guys. We have a fun, safe time down in the comments. It's just a great space, positive place to be. Now, today, this is super embarrassing and might get me in some trouble with Zane, but I thought it would be, since we're at the end of the year, I did just buy a new handbag and it's not here yet. So in anticipation of that and kind of looking back on 2021 as a whole as, ugh, I'm not gonna say it was a bad year, I'm not gonna say it was a good year, it was a year. But it was a heck of a lot better than 2020, so I'm not gonna complain. However, I did a lot of shopping this year, so let's break it down real quick. So in total, I bought 31 bags in 2021. What is that, like a bag a week and a half? It's pretty bad. Um, so the breakdown is I bought 13 from Fashion File. I think I got three three from Rebag, one from Yugi's Closet, three more from eBay, all coach bags, and then 11 new from Boutiques, 31. So today we're going to reflect at 14 of the most iconic bags from this past year, the more, I don't know, just bags that stand out to me or have like special milestones or just, you know, like fun, interesting bags. It's an excuse to get them all out and kind of assess what I have. Well, half of what I have. So I had 31 bags that I purchased this year. I had bags before that. I have a lot. <laughs> so let's take a look at everything we have today. So first off, let's start with the very first reveal on this channel. Well, bag wise anyway, one of the most cringiest and awkward videos on this channel. Give me a break, that was only my third video. The one and only Balenciaga Triangle Clutch. All right, so here it is. It's controversial, it's unique, it's interesting, it's artistic, and it's interesting to carry, I will say that. I love the bag, don't get me wrong. In fact, I actually carried it last week, I think, maybe the week before, and I almost convinced myself to go into Fashion File and buy one of the handheld versions um, that were really popular a couple years ago. I haven't yet. But you know me, I probably will eventually. And I absolutely love Balenciaga. So the first review on this channel, well, reveal anyway, the most awkward video on this channel, the Balenciaga Triangle. So now that we're kind of talking about Balenciaga, let's dive into some more firsts and some more Balenciaga on this channel. So speaking of Balenciaga firsts, no, it's not the first bag, Balenciaga first, but it's the first city bag in my collection. Now I know when I revealed this for you guys last week that you were all blown away, that A, I'm a Balenciaga addict. I My favorite house, my favorite brand, my favorite bags. And I didn't have their most iconic bag, the city bag. So I was able to track this down pretty much new in box. I mean, it really doesn't look like it's been used by the previous owner. Came with the original box, dust bag, paperwork, the whole nine yards, and I absolutely love it. So for those of you who know me and have been watching this channel since we've started, you know when I like something, I buy it in multiples. And that's a trend that the next two bags will only continue to prove. So when it comes to buying multiple bags in the same color, this year I did it not once, not twice, but three times. I did it with the Gucci Ophidia slash Balenciaga Hacker, if you can count that. I did it with the Brief. So I literally ordered this one from Fashion File and before it even arrived, I ordered this one from Fashion File as well. I mean, anthracite with giant gold hardware. I mean, breathtaking. This is, don't tell the others. I love this bag. Does it look great on me? Not the greatest, but I mean, this leather, the hardware, it is mm, perfection. I absolutely love it. And this one, this is a really good, so this color is called Carbon. And this was the first time I had a bag with regular hardware. All of my Balenciaga clutches have the giant hardware. This one's giant hardware. This was my first time having just the regular small hardware with the tassels. And if you remember watching that reveal, the previous person, like, I don't know if they cut them or broke them, but this bag is really sad. Well, as far as tassels go. Aside from that though, I love carrying this one in the fall. It looks really good with like a teddy coat, just kind of like a rugged outdoorsy look, if you can call a $1,800 bag rugged and outdoorsy. I mean, it's my channel, I can say what I want. And anyway, I love the Balenciaga brief. Will I be buying more of these in different colors? Probably not. I have my, my dark gray black and my brown bases covered, so I think I'm good as far as the brief goes, but city bags, part-times, works, 
There's a few coming down the pipeline, mark my words. Sticking to the vein of buying doubles, this one <laughs> was another, not one, but two impulse purchases, I think in like within the span of a week and a half. And it started with my very first Fendi Peekaboo. So when I'm new to a brand, I've, I've never owned a Fendi bag before. <gasps> I know, shocker. I typically start on the lower end, more conservative colors. This one happened to be on Fashion File for like 300-ish, maybe four, I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was very affordable. And immediately after it arrived, I knew I'd have to have it in another color and in much better condition. So I love wearing this bag with like, you know, a big chunky cardigan and a hat and just like, you know, like fall vibes. Like let's go to Aspen and ski or do the wine trail in Michigan that kind of vibe with this bag. Now the interior, I know this is probably everyone's favorite bag in my collection because of that fun denim lining. I mean, if you're gonna have a peekaboo, you have to have a fun lining, right? And this is no exception. So right after I bought this bag, I immediately, this was all in October, I think, by the way, I immediately put this one on reserve at Fashion File. I'm so glad I did. I think this one's like a Napa cowhide. It's, it's so soft, it's so supple. It has mixed metal hardware, which Zane doesn't like, and he's always quick to remind me about that, mm -hmm. but I absolutely love the interior. So this one's very simple. Aside from the mixed metals, it's just like a black suede on the interior and it's such gorgeous leather. I love the feet on the bottom. It's just an iconic bag. So for the coming year, I have a couple peekaboos that I have my eye on currently um, on Fashion Farm. I'm not gonna tell you which ones because I don't want you to buy them out from under me out of spite. So I'm gonna keep it under wraps, but I do see a couple more larges entering my collection and a few more mediums. I wanna try out the smaller sizes. So looking back at 2021, so before this year, I was really into clutches. I had my five Balenciaga flap clutches, my quilted touch puffy clutch thing, whatever you wanna call it from Balenciaga, the triangle. I had my Prada clutch and the nylon, which I think I bought this year, but we're not including it today. Several Louis Vuitton clutches is YSL, three YSL clutches. So I was very heavy in like the pouch clutch look. You can just kind of throw it under your arm, hold it on the top, and it was just my vibe. For some reason though, 2021 was the year of handhelds for me. Um, I used to be really big into handheld bags actually with my previous collections. I had a lot of Louis Vuitton bags, the Sac Platt, the Sorbonne, a couple Speedy 40s. I used to carry a Keep All 45 as a daily bag. I mean, it's 2013, so it was a different time. We were all to the huge bags back then, but I don't know why I thought, you know, I needed a suitcase for every day. I, I kind of got away from it. I ended up selling them all because A, they're a pain. You know, you're at the Target checkout line. You got to unzip it while holding both handles, get your wallet out. It's a whole thing with especially speedy owners, not the bandolier, but like the true handheld speedy. You guys know what I'm talking about. Unless you leave those bags open and just like gaping open at the top, such a pain to get in and out of. And Zane would always nag at me in the target line. He's laughing at me right now because it would take me forever. I'd be like, mm, okay, just a minute. I gotta get my wallet out. So I shied away from them and I don't know what it is, but this year I fell for them in a big way. As you've seen, everything I've pretty much shown you so far, minus the triangle club, is handheld. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just in love with them again. So like I said, 2021 was no exception. And this is a bag that I bought. It was kind of overlooked because I revealed it with a hacker piece from the Gucci Balenciaga hacker project, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But I, I really love this bag. If you all watched the video, you remember the story. The year was 08 when this collection came out. This is the Yves Saint Laurent. Yes, this is before they dropped the Eves, which I'm still sore about, but that's another video for another day. The Yves Saint Laurent Muse 2 bag. Bag. This was the kind of the flagship design. Um, you saw this one on Kate Moss. This one was in all the advertisements, the blue Vachetta leather with the kind of Croco Nubuck here in the front. Ugh, it's a gorgeous bag and it's so easy to carry, you guys. So a lot of people, a lot of the reviews here on YouTube anyway, talk about how difficult it is to get in and out of. Um, in fact, a lot of celebrities would carry it with like one of these undone and just like this and one done so that you can kind of reach in and get your stuff. It's really not that bad. Once you kind of figure out, you know, how to undo it, you can do it easily. And I'm gonna give you guys a full review on this bag, it's probably gonna get like five views because who's searching for a nondescript 10 year old YSL bag? Anyway, that's not the point. It's my channel and I wanna make my own content, but um, I love this bag. So I, I carry this one for, you know, I typically like to carry my bags for an entire week and then switch to something else. And for some reason, when I'm ready to switch to an, a new bag each week, I, I kinda wanna go back to this one. It's so light, it's technically a canvas bag, which is pretty unique um, with just leather panels over it, but it's so easy to carry. It's, it's, I mean, you can throw it on your arm. I mean, hi. <laughs> 
It's just such a fun and cute bag. And I got really lucky and was able to find one in tip top condition. And mark my words, a, a couple more of these in different colors are going to be coming to my collection because now they are super affordable, like two, three, four hundred dollars for the large size. I'm gonna be getting a few more. <laughs> Breaking news, Zane just encouraged me to buy the medium size. So reveal coming up in January. All right, so not only was 2021 big for handheld bags for me, but it's also big in life milestones. I, I had a few achievements this year and to celebrate those, I, I mean, what else would I do? I bought myself a bag. So this year in July, I received a big promotion at work, which made us, you know, well, it didn't make us, I wanted to move to the Chicagoland area. And so I decided, you know, this was a special event in my life. I mean how often do you get to move to one of your dream cities, get promoted at work? I mean, it just was a big time for us. So I thought, you know, to commemorate that, I wanted to buy a very special bag. So the one that I picked up was the Gucci Lady Lock top handle clutch, satchel, whatever and a gorgeous black python. So in my mind, you know, I thought, you know, we'd be taking this to like museum and gallery openings, the theater, um, date nights in the city. Of course, you know, we're still kind of in questionable times as far as going out goes. So I really haven't gotten the chance to, you know, throw on some Tom Ford or some Gucci and, and carry this bag out. However, I absolutely love it. And um, it's just a special bag. So the opening, you just open it with the little clip here, and then it opens up to a gorgeous, purple suede lining. And again, this one was a complete set. It came with all of its paperwork, dust bag, box, the whole nine yards. And I absolutely love this bag. So from the Lady Lock collection, there's also a few larger satchels with like bamboo handles. I think I want to add one of those to my collection or two or three. I mean, who am I kidding? And they did a lot of exotics in this collection. Beautiful like calf leather, box calf leather. And it's just a gorgeous, subtle collection made of like the highest quality materials. Anyway, Gorgeous bag and I would love, do I just keep saying that about all my bags that I love them and I want them in more colors? I mean, it's true, I do. But anyway, so speaking of life milestones. So as you all know, I just started this channel back in March and I think in June or July, I reached out to the Rebag and they have this online blog called The Vault and they selected me to do um, my bag collection on their website, which was really cool. I was in all of their email advertisements that month and it was, phenomenal. And in doing so, they did pay me in some rebag credit, which I mean, I, I'm not complaining. So I took that credit and I bought something rare for myself, the Louis Vuitton Etoile Clutch. This bag was only made for one year in 2009. So it very rarely comes up as I'm showing you this, there's literally two right now in fashion file, but it very rarely comes up. And I just thought, you know, what better way to commemorate my first, I don't know if you could call it a brand deal, but like my first, you know, kind of stepping in to that realm as far as you know a content creator goes than with a rare Louis Vuitton bag. Now this one I again haven't carried it yet because A all the Vachetta does slightly scare me which is weird because I've I've owned Louis Vuitton bags for years so I should be used to Vachetta by now but for some reason on this bag it just kind of you know I'm a little worried about it and it's a little bit older so like the the canvas isn't quite as pliable anymore so it is a little bit hard to get in and out of especially with like a bigger iphone and mine does have a small tear kind of back here in the joinery i think i showed that to you guys when i revealed it i asked your opinion should i return it or not and i think i was already past like the seven day window i wouldn't have returned it anyway it's a fabulous bag another great milestone added to 2021. So speaking of, as we're in the realm of 2021 milestones, I had my 33rd birthday in October. Blows my mind. I mean, I don't feel 33. I don't feel like an adult by any means. So it's just crazy to think that I'm that old, but I decided to treat myself to something I had always wanted. And that was a Louis Vuitton multicolor bag from the Murakami collection. And this did not disappoint. This is my Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> I am head over heels with this bag. I, this is absolutely perfect. So growing up, you know, I always wanted a multicolor bag. You know, Paris Hilton had these, Lindsay Lohan, all the, you know, the it girls of that era had these bags and now I do too. And I love, love, love the multicolor line. So back in the day, I used to like the white and Zane liked the black. Now I like the black, Zane likes the white. So we're never going to agree, but I think that pretty much gives me permission to buy a white one this year, right? Right? Anyway, so this bag is nearly perfect. I loved the lining of the colors. With these, you know, you can do different variations on the colors. I was able to get blues and greens on the back. I got a hot pink, which pink is one of my favorite colors, obviously. I got the chartreuse. My only, only, only complaint is that I have a white one here. If they had just moved this over, then I think I would have gotten like a lavender or a purple LV here with the hot pink here. But 
Beggars can't be choosers. I'm just so excited that I was able to finally add my dream bag to my collection. Again, I haven't carried it yet, but when I do, I think I'm just gonna carry it kind of like a clutch or, you know, under the arm, something like that. I am so excited to carry this bag. Obviously I can't, you know, in the middle of winter because we live in Chicago, so it's snowy, drizzly, nasty. So I'm gonna have to wait till summer, but when summer comes, watch out, cause I'm coming. All right, so sticking with big, milestones of 2021. The final one in that little segment is going to be my Marmont from Gucci. This is my first Marmont bag, and I don't know what took me so long to get here, but I am all about the Marmont bag now. So this bag, it's it's fabulous. We picked this up on Passage du Gracia if you haven't already watched my Spain vlogs yet, link down in the description. I'll try and link all of the reveals, reviews, and unboxings for all these bags as long as, as well as the coinciding, like my rebag video, my Spain videos. It'll all be in the description, so Bear with me, but they'll be down there, I promise. But before this bag, I kind of scoffed at the Marmont collection. You know, you saw them on all the influencers on Instagram, all over YouTube. And until you own one, I, I don't think you can understand how wonderful the Marmont bag is. So when this collection came out, this is from the Multicolor Collection. I think they came in blue, which I have here, green, there was a pink, and then the flat bags, there was like a variation of all the colors in one flat bag. They were all gorgeous. And I was kind of debating between either the blue or the green flat version. It's like, okay, well, for a little bit less, well, a lot less actually, I could buy just the small shoulder bag. And then by the time, you know, I was ready to buy, it was only down to the blue bag still in stores. So that's, you know, musical chairs. But this is probably the one I would have wanted anyway, because I don't really have any fun, bright pops of color. He says while looking around at some crazy colored bags. Anyway, the majority of my collection is very neutral, which is something we're going to change here in 2022, but that's another video. Safe to say I love the Marmont bag. Will I be adding more colors? No, um, I, I love this bag a lot, but I think that, you know, it kind of, you know, once you get one, you're, you're probably okay. Now, for those of you who have several Marmont bags, awesome. I know there's some really good variations. There's some like bedazzled in pearls, jewels, exotics. They make some very beautiful Marmonts, but I think that, you know, having just this one in a special color really kind of fills that hole that I was missing in my collection. So that kind of wraps up the special milestone bags for 2021. As all of you know, I have a very soft spot in my heart for Coach. I used to collect Coach bags exclusively almost. I had some very rare, very unique pieces that I stupidly sold for far less than what they were worth. And now you can't find them anymore, so awesome. And um, I actually worked at Coach for a short time. That might be another story time, lots of drama. I love Coach and I had been kind of sleeping on Coach. I think a lot of their designs had become a little tired in the last 10 years, a little, you know, we've seen that, you know, what else can you do Coach? And this year they have killed it. They have the puffy tabby out, which I still want, the pillow tabby, the mini Bonnie Cashin, which we'll get to here in a minute, and the Rogue bag. I am obsessed with the Rogue bag, you guys. But one Coach bag that I do have is the mini Cashin. Now, I, Love this bag. So this bag at Coach, it's $250. You heard that right. An all leather bag with feet and a crossbody strap for $250. Now this bag, it is so cute. It's so unique. I think that, you know, a lot of people, well, design houses are doing like these small kind of like cell phone shopping totes and they're nice and all, don't get me wrong, but I really don't want to pay, you know, $1,200, $1,500 for a teeny tiny little bag. So this one, not only is it at a great price point, it's beautifully constructed, has feet, if you can hear that on the marble. Now, everyone who knows me knows that I like to carry one bag for the entire week, no matter what I'm doing, unless it's like raining, snowing, or gross out, then I switch over to my Stay down. <laughs> I switch over to my Prada nylon clutch. Now, this is one exception that I'll make. So typically, you know, if we go into the city for the afternoon or on the weekend, I like to switch into this bag. It's so easy to carry. It's easy to get in and out of, but not so easy to get in and out of that I'm worried about pickpockets. And I can just throw it over my, sh my shoulder and just go. It holds the right amount without holding too much or being too big or too bulky. And then when you're, you know, at a restaurant, you can easily just take it off, set it down on the table. And it has a small footprint. It's just like the perfect bag. And I find myself, you know, switching over to this a lot more just kind of on the fly than I would any other bag. And I think that speaks volumes. Also, after I showed mine off, 
Several other people went out and bought one on the, of their own. And if you ask them, I think they all love it. So this bag is $250. It's such a good investment. You're gonna get so much wear for your money. And it's currently available. I think the Buttercup is sold out, if I remember right. Amazon Green is currently on sale. Japan got a special edition blush, which I would love to get my hands on, but I opted for chalk. It's just a beautiful chalky white. And I haven't had, knock on wood, any issues with like color transfer or getting it dirty. But again, I'm very careful with all my bags, as you all know. The mini cash and tote, it's the perfect bag, who knew? So staying in the realm of contemporary designers, I have one more coach bag to share with you guys, and that is my coach ski bum bag. So this bag is from a coach collection. I think this is from 2003, I don't remember, but for those of you who watched me reveal this bag, you know that we went back in time. We got onto the coach website from back then and we were able to see this bag, the other bag from this collection, and then different like various bags like the uh, kiss lock clutches that were really popular, the Daphne satchel, the shearling bags, the beaded gallery totes. We saw it all and it was so much fun and I absolutely love this bag. I haven't carried it yet. Winter just started here. It hasn't really snowed outside. I'm kind of waiting for it to be, you know, that snowy perfect afternoon to take this bag out. It's technically a bum bag. There's like this tiny little strap that you would technically wear across body or around your waist. I'm not that small so I can't wear it that way unless I were to find like maybe another chain or another belt to go with it but super cute. I absolutely love the interior. It's that iconic vermilion orange from Coach that they did with their signature bags back in the day. I still have a little strap in there and this is you know, covered in rabbit fur, which is in good condition considering its age. And fun fact, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I just ordered another bag from this collection on eBay this week. It's coming from Japan. Should arrive early next week, but not soon enough to do a reveal for this year. So you guys are gonna have to wait until January. I also bought a wallet to go with it too. So I'm gonna have like a whole coach unboxing for you guys. Anyway, I absolutely love this bag. It's unique, has unique materials. And I think it's a really cute clutch. I could really see myself, you know, skiing weekend, wine tasting, traveling, you know, Christmas markets. It's the perfect bag. I absolutely love it. So with 2021, we saw a lot of fun design house collabs. We had the Fendi Versace, which I slept on, I'm not gonna lie. We had the Gucci Balenciaga Hacker Project, which we're gonna get here to in a minute. You know, I was a huge fan of that collection. And one of my favorites, which I was lucky to get a small piece of, was the Louis Vuitton Fornicetti collection. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram for you know a period of time, caleb.snell.designer, you're gonna know that I'm an avid fan of classic interiors. I love collecting, you know, antique intaglios from like the European Grand Tour. I have a few older glass pieces that have been carved. I have some plaster reliefs. So I absolutely love, you know, just like Greek and Roman antiquity. That's like my vibe. I love it. And the Fornicetti Louis Vuitton collection did not disappoint. I, of course, was able to pick up the bandeau. I know. It's something. I was happy to do that. You know what? Now that I'm sitting here, how cute would that look tied on my peekaboo? Oh, okay, that's a vibe. I might have to do that the next time I get that bag out. Anyway, so I picked up the Bando. Now, in a perfect world, I would have been able to have snagged the Alma or the Pachette Matisse, which 2022, if it's not still exorbitantly priced on Fashion File, I might just do that. I'm just happy to have the Bando, quite honestly. I was like, I'm not the biggest fan of Fornicetti, honestly. The whole, like, the plates, it's, it's, we've seen it. It's done. Like, you know, let's find something else. But, like, this Fornicetti collection was absolute perfection. I loved the coin and cameo bando. I even loved like the little um, bucket bag that was like a little, you know, Roman temple. It was just the perfect collection. I think they really nailed it and they knocked it out of the park. I'm just glad to have a very small piece of it. I wish I had more. So sticking to the realm of special collabs, well, it's not really a collab, it was technically a project, so they said. Let's dive into the Gucci Balenciaga Hacker Project. So this all started for me months ago when the photo of the hourglass dropped instantly went onto my Instagram story. I love that bag. Was I lucky enough to get one? No, boo. <laughs> But I was able to get a few pieces. So from the Gucci side of things, I picked up the hourglass card holder wallet, the little slim wallet, and I haven't used it yet. Honestly, I'm a little worried too. I don't know why. It just like, I don't want it to be not perfect anymore, but it's so stinking cute, you guys. And I love the B here on the front. So my puffy quilted leather touch clutch, whatever it is from Balenciaga has the B, but in the blackout hardware. And this is so cute. I absolutely love this. So when we finally got to our Gucci that night, um, I think the pro project had just revealed that weekend and it was like we were late at night on a weeknight and they had, they had a few bags. Um, in a perfect world, I would have been able to have gotten the city bag or the hourglass bag. I got a wallet. Again, 
something, I guess, but um, it's super cute. But here's the kicker. So I was able to, after a lot of work, track down a bag from Balenciaga. So we stopped into our new Balenciaga. We have a new concession here at the Saks Fifth Avenue on Michigan Avenue. And I asked her before we even went into Gucci, I, I talked to the store director there and I was like, hey, you know, I, I really want this bag. Did you guys get anything from the collection? And she informed me that they didn't, which is a huge bummer because at the Gucci here in town, literally a line down the street, they sold out of everything that was reserved and whoever didn't come up and pick the reserves, their items quickly got sold anyway. So it would have been a huge hit here in Chicago. And hopefully if there's another collection like this through Balenciaga, we can get those pieces here in town. But I constantly was like refreshing the website. Like I had to have this bag, you guys. I was not gonna let it go. I wanted one thing from each house. And since Balenciaga is my favorite house, don't let the others hear you, my favorite house, I was like, I have to have a bag from their side of it. So I had the wallet from Gucci, needed the bag from Balenciaga. So finally, I think the day after Thanksgiving, I was able to text the store. And then luckily they were able to have the Saks Fifth Avenue in New York transfer the bag over to the Chicago store. No, they didn't even transfer it to the Chicago store. They actually shipped it right to our apartment. It took like two days, it was super quick. And I got the small shoulder bag or the Ophidia version of the project. So I was so jazzed. This was like all over my Instagram. I had, you know, the video went up right away. And how cool is this that I was, you know, I have the bag in the wallet. Ah, I'm so jazzed. Okay, this is so fun. I haven't carried the bag yet, but I did just reveal the suede version of this bag from my La Roca outlet haul. Just, I think, what, last week, two weeks ago? I'm gonna do a little comparison between the two. There are some quirks and variations between the two. Although this has a lot of Gucci hallmarks, it does have some Balenciaga hallmarks, which I'll point out for you guys. I'm gonna use it with this wallet. I just think that's like the perfect combo. So the next time we go into the city, I might be using this one. I love this bag. Okay, you guys, so that is 14. I think, count them, 14. Again, math's not my strong suit. We all know that by now. 14 of the 31 bags that I purchased in 2021. Is that a bit excessive? Absolutely. Will I be doing the same thing in 2022? I hope not. Um, so next week I'm going to come with you, I'm gonna come out with a video. It's gonna be like my New Year's resolution for my bag collection. I'm not gonna sell anything because I don't do that. I'm a hoarder probably, but I'm going to buy a lot less bags, but a few higher ticket bags. Am I gonna buy a Birkin next year? Highly unlikely, but never say never. I have my eye on a Chanel. There's some YSLs I want. We'll talk about it next week, I promise. But thank you guys for sitting through this. I wanted to give you guys some bag candy to look at. I also wanted to reflect on my collection and kind of prepare for Wednesday's video because that's gonna be pretty in depth. So this was just kind of a fun chance to show you guys some bag candy and play with all my stuff. Just, we're here for it, whatever. So thank you guys for sitting through this. I have no idea how long this is gonna be. Zane just informed me that it's 38 minutes on the camera. So hopefully it's not that long, but if it is, thank you for sitting through all that. And um, yeah, I hope you all had a great weekend. For those of you who celebrated Christmas, Merry Christmas. To those of you who didn't, I hope you had a joyous festive season and a strong end to 2021. And here's looking forward to 2022. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.